Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Sunnah Revival by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari Sunan relating to correcting others' mistakes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is Mu'iz Bukhari recording for the Daily Reminder Network. For this episode and the next one, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will be focusing on the prophetic methodology of correcting mistakes. Mistakes are the consequences of life and it is part and parcel of being human. For none of us are perfect, we all make mistakes. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, and the narration goes along the lines of these words, every son of Adam makes mistakes, and the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The narration is recorded in the book of Imam Tirmidhi and Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahum Allah. Mistakes are the stepping stones to learning. Mistakes are opportunities to pick up ourselves and become stronger. Mistakes are meant to guide you and as someone once said, your best teacher is your last mistake. But this does not mean that we should leave people committing mistakes alone or find excuses for those who are committing sins on the basis that they are only human or that they are just youngsters or that the modern age is full of temptations and so on. We must denounce the actions and call the people to account without being judgmental but at the same time we must evaluate and correct their actions only according to Islam. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, approached mistakes in others not as a cause for shame or humiliation but rather as an opportunity to teach and guide. He وسلم, corrected people's errors and mistakes with care, gentleness and empathy. He used mistakes as opportunities to empower people and not break them. So let us discuss a few etiquettes and guidelines derived from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad when correcting the mistakes of others. Number one on the list when correcting the mistakes of others is that it is essential and vital that one's intention be only to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to demonstrate one's superiority or to vent one's anger or to impress others. For if the intention of the person giving advice is sincere, he will be rewarded and his advice will be accepted and acted upon insha'Allah ta'ala. The second guideline that we need to adopt is that we must be gentle when correcting others as this was the way of our kind and loving Prophet. May my mother, my father and myself be ransomed for him. Once during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a Bedouin Arab who came into the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ and urinated. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ flew into a rage but the Prophet ﷺ calmed them down and let the man finish relieving himself. He reminded his companions that they were sent to make things easy on people, not difficult. The Bedouin later recounted his experience with the Prophet ﷺ and he went on to say along the lines of these words, he did not scold or insult me, he just said, we do not urinate in these masajid, they were built for prayer and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called for a pail of water to be poured on the ground and the place be cleansed of the impurity. This was the gentle nature of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the final guideline for this episode is to be firm when appropriate. Being gentle is a beautiful quality as long as it is not taken advantage of. This is when firmness can sometimes be more effective in prompting introspection and personal reform. The Prophet knew when to be firm and when to be soft. We need to weigh the situation and prescribe appropriate solutions to people's problems. And we need to be strategic in knowing when to be a bit forceful and when to be soft. Once, when two companions of the Prophet ﷺ had been backbiting about someone, the Prophet ﷺ rebuked them with stern words, warning them that they had eaten, that they had consumed the flesh of their brother. When they asked the Prophet ﷺ for forgiveness, he ordered them to ask the individual that they had spoken ill of for forgiveness instead. On another occasion, 
the mistake was a simple one that just needed a gentle nudge. Young Al-Fadl ibn al-Abbas radiallahu anhu was a young Sahabi. He was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a beautiful woman came across. Al-Fadl could not stop himself from staring and looking at the woman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the boy's chin in his hand and turned his face in the opposite direction. This is the balance the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us in everything. So let us strive to follow him in all walks of our life if we wish to attain success in this world as well as the hereafter. Please don't forget to share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing Sunnah revival. I look forward to seeing you all the next Wednesday insha'Allah ta'ala only on the Daily Reminder Network. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Support the Dawah. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.